Congratulations. Oh, thank you. I'm going to put you in a very embarrassing position. Okay. Okay. <laughs> because I've been standing with you. We've been visiting for a little while. Could you just give us a few bars of something? Anything? Oh, no. Yeah, no. Oh, you did put me I, in the spot. I've been listening to her. <laughs> just like bad girls or something. Just a little, oh, a little um, line. Just bad girls. I mean, she got Talking it. Talking about the sad girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to warm up. <laughs> that is Bruce and Donna's girl. Yes. Um, look, if my family uh, made home movies the way yours did, I mean, yours makes home movies like we made pasta, <laughs> um, I would make a documentary too. Mm. But why else? Why did you do this? You know, I think that part of it was becoming a mother myself um, a few years after my mom had passed and really looking over life and, and understanding that relationship. Uh, I also, after her passing, had so many people come up to me and share their stories of what her songs meant to her, what an interaction with her meant to her. And, you know, as I thought about it, I just realized there was so much to her life and beyond just the songs and the music. And I didn't feel like there was anything there that really reflected the full humanity and artistry of her as a woman and as a mother and as an, you know, as an artist. So, um, yeah, I, I, I jumped off the cliff and started the process. Well, and you'd lived with it. Uh, we see that. And with your dad, Bruce Adano, I was a huge fan of Brooklyn Dreams. <laughs> Brooklyn Dreams. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. <laughs> um, uh, and so they were, there must have been music all the time and stories all the time. It's yeah. not as if you didn't know, but you couldn't have known to a certain extent. Did no, no. I, I think for me, obviously, you have kind of an idea of what happened. You know, uh, as you see in the film, you see Mimi's experience was much different than Amanda and I's. Uh, so, you know, there was a lot of really unearthing the details and in those details you hear all these different stories and the impact of those being older and understanding the whole timeline of thing just carries so much more weight yeah. and you have to rewrite your own history to yourself in a way um, I have so much more grace for her understanding, particularly like 1975 to 1980, 81, right before I was born, just the immense pressure and the, all that she did and performed and the, the creative output um, that she put forth into the world at that point, it just, it really is mind boggling to me. It is, and it's, you know, to see it back, to be reminded of it, mm -hmm. uh, for some of us, you know, who were there, and. I mean, when you started to really see how huge she was, I mean, just, it was the soundtrack. You couldn't turn on a radio without hearing Donna Summer. It was where, you know, where you went out at night, it was... I mean, that still happens. I was getting on the airplane and Hot Stuff started as I was, you know, boarding the airplane. So that still happens to me, which is amazing. When you really could see it, really see it, how big it was as you were going through the archives and all the, all the interviews, all the, I mean, how big it was and how she, how beautifully she handled it, you know, to yeah. see. What, as that was, was there a moment where it was really dawning on you? I think it was a it was a gradual process, but I think when we really s edited all that moment together and I sat with it and I go, wow, like how she was able to survive that. Mm -hmm. I, I like I said, I you know, and being a mother, being a mother doing this process, I go, I don't I don't know how she did that. I mean, granted, a lot of family, a lot of support that she leaned on, her faith she leaned on, um, you know, those foundational things is what got her through. And so for me, that's what I go to. Yeah. I go to the family, I go to faith. And so it's, it was an example uh, of how to do this. It's, well, you, you and I spoke about this. Um, I knew your mom mm. and your dad, and I was thinking about the 70s. We were the same age, and I, couldn't believe 
what she was doing in the 70s. And <laughs> I had had a chance to interview her first for a, a little show. You can ask your grandparents about it. It was called <laughs> Evening Magazine, and, and it was in the 70s. And this was right, I mean, she couldn't have been bigger. And she'd come home for something, and we spent some time with her. And as I was watching the movie on you know, a, a, um, a version that I had, I was thinking, oh, I would, I'd give anything to, know, to be reminded of that story and to know wh where is that. And then at one hour and one minute, you hear that little voice say, when did you think to bring your family into the group? And that was me. <laughs> and I, I had no God. idea. Oh God, How amazing me. is that? <laughs> no idea. Well, but what I was struck by is that in that moment, you, you don't remember, but it's at 11 minutes and <laughs> one second to about 36 seconds in there. And it's when she's having this conversation with someone who we don't see, but it's me. And she's got her, her makeup is off, and she's got her. And she was doing this. This was a television interview, mm. and she just she was, was keeping it real. She was kicked back. She was so real, yeah. and that and that is what I remember, mm -hmm. you know. And that's what you see in the film. Mm. There was the her authenticity, mm. and also how tired she was then. Yes, um, this was in the '70s. So. Yes. There's one photo in there that always strikes me, and it's Mimi's talking about how exhausted she is, and then there's this image of her, and you just, it, it is so When they were deep. in the beds. Yes, the beds, and yeah. it's just so deep because you just, you see it. It's, it, you know, um, so to find images like that to be reflective of really just how exhausting the pace, the expectation, um, and carrying that persona because it wasn't, that was one part of who she was. It was not everything. I mean, she was very funny as I'm, I'm hoping that you guys all got to witness, you know, shaking those oranges and things like that, you know. Um, that was really, she was a jokester. She was funny. She was, you know, lighthearted, sometimes body making off color jokes, you know. She was, that was what she leaned into. Um, and so to kind of have to be like this, Thing was not always um, she was playing easy. A part. Yeah, she was playing yeah. a part. She under, but she understood that's what it, it took, and that's what she needed to do. Yeah. What was it like for you? Uh, I'm sure be, way before you made this film, but you and your sisters to see mom, you know, um, with what had to have been the first top ten simulated orgasm. <laughs> um, it was astonishing, you know, even in You the know, we went to a Christian school, right? I so, uh, you know. <laughs> what was that like to see that? You know, I, what, we were really sheltered from a lot of that up until, yeah. you know, middle school where you see Amanda and I having this kind of, that was a very real thing. She didn't do that song in shows and so we weren't exposed to that. So that was a very real discovery for the two of us, like, like, oh, like, okay. Thankfully, most of my friends at the time were not paying attention really to what she was doing or where she was coming from. I mean, their parents did, but, um, but yeah, it was, that was not our existence at the time. It was very removed from the environment and the life that we were living at that but point. But I hope you could see it eventually as how liberating it was. Oh yes, no, I think she, you know, my mom, when she went for something, she went for it, <laughs> you know, like in, in all ways, you know, she didn't do anything halfway. If she was going to remodel the house, she was going to remodel the house. If she was going to build a garden, she was going to build a garden. So um, right that was her, album. right. If she was going to do a concept album, she was really amazing at creating moments and creating an experience. And that was one of the kind of the, the foundational points of, of Roger and I's vision for this film. We really wanted it to be a full experience. When you went to her concerts, I think that was one of the th reasons why people would come back and back after having seen it was because it was a full body experience. She would sing a song, take you to church, take you to the dance club, sing a song about love and passion, sing a pa song about being in a bad marriage, all of these things. You would have the full experience. And so, you know, one of the things that was really important was to have a film that was reflective of that. Well, and it also reflected all the pain. Um, mm -hmm. You know, being molested by uh, the pastor, seeing that echoed in mm -hmm. Mimi, in mm -hmm. her daughter. Yes. Uh, Pretty devastating. Yeah. 
quick question. Mm -hmm. Did this was a family? Obviously, she had a camera. One of the lo great losses, I think, is that we didn't get to see her as a filmmaker because I feel she would have been. Yeah. But here, here we are. go. Yeah. Here you are. <laughs> um, but did you really have film of when it looked as it looked like when Mimi was telling her when your sister was telling her what had happened to her? That actually was archival that was separated, but just happened to really happened work. Happened to fit the moment. It just okay. happened to fit the moment. Um, you know, all of that was very important, and there was a lot of discussions around that because I think about how you talked about, about it. how we talked about that because trauma is real. We've all experienced it in our lives. We all have somebody know somebody, um, unfortunately, and you know I think that the generationality of that trauma gets passed down. Um, and, you know, Mimi's conversation with me about that was unexpected. I, I obviously knew some of the story. I did not know that she was going to talk so freely about it. And, you know, as we talked about how to approach it and whether to include it, um, we really felt like it was necessary because it was part of my journey through this process and, and our family's healing. And I think, you know, one of the things that I hope people can take away from this film is understanding that, you know, these things happen, but having these conversations, as difficult as they are, um, as hard as it is to face these things, it is so important to have these conversations and they're worthwhile. And I will say in our own personal family, there has been so much healing because of these, these conversations. It might not have been Go something, ahead. thank you, thank you. It's, it's a hard thing yeah. to, I mean, a little bit about you, because you were telling me that in your family, your mom used to call you the reporter. <laughs> yes. Because you always like came in and had to tell everybody yes, what was Yes, yes, what's going on today. And yeah. I, you know, I think I became a reporter because there were things in the family or things in the world and I just didn't understand them. So I started doing stories yes. about things and I realized it's always been about how did you handle, how did you be yeah. a family? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's all, that's always been the, the, the basis of it. And I wonder if that was it for you too. Like, Well, I thought, you know, as Roger and I discussed this film very early on part he's never co-directed with anybody and if for those who don't know Roger Ross Williams is an Oscar winning documentarian and so I felt very privileged to partner with him on this project but when we first sat down I looked at him I said listen I'm a truth seeker I am not here to do and no offense to behind the music but a behind the music special that has been done I am here to show my mother's artistry, but also her humanity. And the real art comes sometimes from pain and trauma. And I want you to understand her and understand the way that her mind works. You can't tell the full story without broaching some of those topics. Mm -hmm. And I feel like part of the reason she was able to connect with people the way that she was through her music was because she saw people. She saw, you know, that, that inner thing, that pain was able to connect, even if it was a dance song. People would cry on the, you know, I had so many people like, I was dancing to try me, try me, try me, and I just broke down in tears because yeah. they felt seen. And I feel like that is the power of art, is to heal and to bring joy and to bring love. And I think, you know, to do this film any other way would have been a disservice to her story. Thank you.